Good morning, and my thanks to Young John Lee and the Citizen Power Initiatives for the invitation to join you today. And after that build up, I can hardly wait to hear what I'm going to say. Um, but uh, I'm always happy to say a few words at these annual conferences because I am a strong believer in nonviolent action and in the power that comes from unifying and working together in spite of differences. You know, that kind of coming together, unity created from diversity, is what makes the United States a strong country. And unity, in spite of ethnic, cultural, religious, and linguistic differences, will be necessary to make change possible in China. Citizens Power's commitment to bringing everyone together, Han Chinese, Tibetans, Uyghurs, Mongolians, Christians, Falun Gong practitioners, Muslims, Buddhists, and people from Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Macau, and concentrating on what everyone has in common is exactly the right thing to do. And I congratulate you for taking this approach. I also want to applaud your focus on empowering young leaders. You know, there is a lot to be said for the knowledge and wisdom that comes from experience. But there is just as much to be said for the creativity and the fearlessness and the hope and the sheer energy of young people whose entire futures are on the line. This year in Hong Kong, we have seen the power of young leaders who have taken to the streets over and over and over again to stand up for their rights. It is so important that you are honoring them today by giving the Citizen Power Award uh, to the Civil Human Rights Front of Hong Kong. You know, the Civil Human Rights Front is a coalition of 50 organizations that has been absolutely, absolutely key in building and sustaining the Hong Kong protest movement. It is a living, breathing example of the importance of collective action. And its leaders are young. Many are students, including four of those who are with us today. Uh, and all of us have seen them in action over the last several months. I mean, the whole world has been riveted uh, on what has been happening in Hong Kong. Uh, and the creativity of this movement is, uh, is, is the likes of which we have never seen before. Um, you know, the peaceful approach, the, the polite approach to protest, uh, organizing in ways that uh, I think other protests that, I, that we have observed over the years have not necessarily followed. But one of the reasons why they're effective is because of the way they have approached this. Um, you know, we don't, um, we don't know yet how things will turn out in Hong Kong. We are all hopeful. Uh, but we do know that millions of Hong Kongers are willing to stand up for their rights and want to choose their own leaders. You know, part of the reason we know that is because of the bravery and the creativity and the persistence of the Civil Human Rights Front. You know, this week, uh, this last, last past week, um, the House of Representatives passed legislation in solidarity and in support uh, of the demands of the Hong Kongers. Both the Protect Hong Kong Act uh, that I introduced, uh, which bans exports of equipment used to repress protesters, and the Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act passed by a unanimous vote in the House of Representatives. Democrats and Republicans all came together. Liberals and conservatives all came together. Uh, for those of you who have been observing Washington in the last few months, we can't agree on what to have for lunch. Uh, and yet people came together in solidarity behind these measures. And, um, and passing those bills was an important step. But it is not the end of the story, uh, nor can it be the end of our solidarity uh, with uh, those who are fighting for their rights. Now, now it's time to pressure the Senate uh, to do its part and to push the Trump administration to do the right thing. And so far, they haven't. You know, we have heard some very positive statements from some individuals uh, in the Trump administration on some of the uh, and ex expressing solidarity with the protesters. But we haven't heard it from the president. Um, and until the president gets, you know, on the on the right uh, uh, track here uh, and joins with the bipartisan coalition in the Congress, um, we are sending mixed me messages to mainland China. Uh, we need to make it clear, and, I, and, and by that I mean our entire government, uh, from Congress to the executive branch, that if the United States of America stands for anything, we stand out loud and four square for human rights. Um, you know, and, you know, and while we're gathering here, the news from Xinjiang is terrible.
and the repression in Tibet continues. Um, I was with uh, a group of uh, Tibetans in my congressional district uh, on Saturday night celebrating the 12th anniversary of His Holiness the Dalai Lama uh, receiving the Congressional Gold Medal, the highest award that Congress can bestow on anyone. And, um, and I was reminding them you know, that one of the reasons why you know, we have moved forward on legislation to help on the Tibet <coughs> cause is because of the activism of those here in the United States. Those Tibetans in the United States uh, and those Uyghurs in the United States um, who have come to their elected officials and asked us to take a stand. Um, and so I want to thank them for their activism. Um, you know, the Chinese authorities are doing everything they can uh, to make sure that the news in Hong Kong does not reach mainland China. And that is why this conference is so important. You have the opportunity today and tomorrow to share information, to share with us ideas and strategies, and to figure out how to work together to support the struggle in Hong Kong and, and oppose the repression elsewhere. You know, change can take a long time, um, or it can come like lightning. Uh, a year ago, I don't think any of us uh, imagined a social movement like we've seen in Hong Kong. Uh, so please keep up the, the good work. Um, you are an example uh, and an inspiration to so many people around the world um, who are fighting for justice and fighting for their rights. So I want to thank you again for inviting me to, uh, to join you here today. And I wish you a very, very productive conference. Um, and I'll just close with this. I, I, uh, I'm, I'm a believer in the power of people, um, and um, you know, and, and, and as, as we're honoring, um, you know, uh, our, our brothers and sisters in Hong Kong today, um, you know, I, I remind my colleagues here in the house all the time, you know, who stand up and give speeches about uh, the situation that it doesn't take any courage for us to do that. Um, I can say whatever I want uh, about. Uh, President Xi or uh, about the government of mainland China, nothing's going to happen to me. Um, it's different uh, for those uh, who are bravely standing up in Hong Kong and elsewhere. Uh, they do so at great personal risk. Uh, the future is uncertain, um, and the more they get out there, the more they put themselves at risk. I mean, we ought to, we, we ought to recognize that courage. Um, and again, I, I you know, I I talked about there were a lot of young people in this movement to think about the courage and the guts it has taken for them to organize uh, these peaceful demonstrations, for them to persist uh, in, in, in the face of what we see as increasing brutality from the, Hong, uh, from the government of Hong Kong. Um, it, is, it is amazing to me. And, um, and we ought to all be inspired by that. Uh, and we ought to be wind at their back. You know, an old history professor of mine used to end every class by saying the same thing. He used to say, the world will not get better on its own. And I'll be honest with you, when I took his class, I didn't know what the hell he was talking about. Um, I do now. I do now. Nothing good changes, whether it's here in the United States or around the world, unless like-minded people come together and demand that it change. Um, and um, it takes courage. It takes persistence. Uh, but uh, being on the right side of history, as I know so many of these people in Hong Kong are, I mean, the, the, the protests, right? they're on the right side of history, um, and, um, and they deserve our recognition, and they deserve to be honored here today. So I thank you so much uh, for having me here today, and I'm thrilled to be with all of you. Thank you.